Today, we're gonna to make some bar pizza. It originated in the South Shore of Massachusetts, where I grew up, and I had it my entire childhood. It's a wonderful pan pizza with sauce and cheese that goes all the way to the edge and a thin cracker-like crust. So watch the video, learn how to make it. You'll love it, I guarantee. Also, this is a collaboration with Ethan over at Cooking With E. He's making some delicious pies on his channel, so go check out his video when you're done watching mine. So there's some items that we need to prep before we can actually cook pizza. One is to make our sauce. Two is to make dough. Three is to grate some cheese. And four, we need to gather some toppings. Since the sauce is sort of the least exciting part of all of this, let's knock that out first. The first thing you'll need to do is grab a saucepan and get it over medium heat. And then you're gonna wanna add about a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil is moderately hot, but not super hot, go ahead and add your garlic. This is about a tablespoon and a half. Uh, four cloves or about 20 grams. So give that a quick stir. And then you're gonna wanna add some chili flake. I'm using Aleppo pepper. Aleppo's got a, just a gentler heat than uh, typical red chili flake, but you can use that as well. I'm adding a, uh, about a quarter teaspoon here. There. Add a half teaspoon of dried oregano. And if all you have is an Italian blend, use it. It'll be yummy. Then carefully add a can of San Marzano tomatoes. This is 28 ounces or 794 grams. And to finish things up, we're gonna add 14 grams. Uh, that's a half ounce or one tablespoon of sugar and uh, 12 grams of fine sea salt. That's just under a half ounce or a teaspoon and a half. <laughs> Almost forgot, we need a quarter teaspoon of ground fennel seed. Now, reduce the heat to low, bring your sauce to a simmer and let that cook for about an hour until it's reduced by a third. All right, the sauce has been cooking for about an hour and it's reduced by a third. You can use a whisk to break up the tomatoes or I'm gonna hit it with a stick blender just to break up the tomatoes and smooth out the sauce. Looks pretty good. Now let the sauce cool to room temp, then transfer it to a bowl or a container, slap a lid on it, then put it in your fridge and hold it until you're ready to make pizza. Now let's make the dough. All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is grab yourself a bowl and add 320 grams of warm water. That's about 11 and a half ounces. Temp should be about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a nice round number. And then add some sea salt. This is about 12 grams, a little under a half ounce or about two teaspoons. Give the water a little stir to dissolve the salt and then go in with two grams of active dry yeast. That's about a half teaspoon there. All right, I know there's gonna be some concerned folks that are worried that the salt's gonna kill their yeast. Trust me, it's not going to. There's not enough of it in this mixture to do that. But if it's something you can't live with, just add the active dry yeast to your flour and you'll be all good. Now we're just gonna put this bowl off to the side and let the yeast bloom for a few minutes. And in the meantime, Grab yourself a pretty big bowl. This is what you're gonna knead the dough in and add 520 grams or about a pound and two ounces of all-purpose flour. And if you're looking for the volume measurements, they're waiting for you in the video description box below the video. Now just make a well in the center of your flour. This is where your liquids are gonna go. Uh, pour the yeast and water and salt in. Make sure there's, there. Make sure you get all the yeast. And then add 28 grams of extra virgin olive oil. That's about two tablespoons, about an ounce. And then just start mixing very gently with your hands. Just start incorporating the wet and the dry ingredients together. If you guys have a stand mixer, go ahead and use it. But I know a lot of folks watching today probably don't have one, so we're gonna mix this by hand. And uh, to do that, just keep mixing. Dough's gonna look shaggy at first and you're gonna see some dry ingredients at the bottom. But if you pinch, and just press the ingredients together and fold and kind of do all those things. Eventually, you'll have a nice homogenous bar pizza dough. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna throw a damp cloth over the dough and let it rest for about 15 minutes just to let the flour hydrate. Then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. Okie dokie, it's been 15 minutes and our dough looks pretty good. Now we can do one of two things. We can either knead or we can fold it. Let me show you what I mean by folding. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the dough and you're gonna pull up on it and fold it over onto itself. And you're just gonna work around the perimeter 
doing this, you probably get four folds out of this, okay? Four folds out of the dough. So I've done two. Here's a third one. And then a fourth one, okay? Just like that. Kind of press down, make sure everything is nice and tight. Cool. All right, place your damp cloth back over the dough and let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes, okay? And then repeat the entire process all over again. You're gonna do this about three or four times in the course of an hour. Alternatively, you can just knead the dough and that's what I'll show you next. You're gonna to wanna to lightly flour your work surface, just like this, just a little bit. You don't wanna to incorporate too much new flour into the dough. And then you're gonna turn your dough out onto the board. Just turn the dough out on your work surface. Sprinkle a little bit of flour over the top of the dough, just like that. And then fold it over onto itself, turn and repeat. Fold it over, turn 90 degrees, repeat. Do this. I'd say knead like this for about a couple of minutes. And anytime the dough just gets a little bit too sticky for you, you can use uh, a little bit more flour, just enough to keep it from sticking, that's all. And after about two minutes, like I said, two to three minutes, your dough will be ready to go. Looks pretty good. Yeah, look at that. So now you have two options. You can either knead or you can fold. Kneading is obviously a little faster, but it requires some more technique. Folding, not so much. It's pretty straightforward, but it takes a little bit more time. Whatever you choose, they both make great doughs. So when you're ready, grab a lightly greased bowl, Drop your dough in, cover the bowl with some plastic film and let it rest at room temp for two hours or until it's doubled in size. All right, it's been about two hours. My dough is just about doubled in size. Not quite, but close. And I'm cool with that. I'm gonna lightly flour this work surface. Then I'm gonna turn the dough carefully now. Turn it out onto this counter here. There, I'm gonna flour the top of this dough a little bit so my cutter won't stick to it. And since this dough is uh, for four pizzas, I'm gonna cut this into four equal pieces. All right. And I'm gonna use a scale to uh, fine tune the weight of each piece. So let's, let's see here. Uh, 215. Should all be between 210 and 220 grams. 206, that one's a little lighter. 214, and this one's gonna be heavier. 224. So we're gonna take a little nub off this one, apply it to this one, and I think we're good. All right, grab some containers, preferably ones with a lid. I've got these plastic ones here, you're gonna need four and I've lightly greased the inside with some olive oil. You can use any type of oil you want to, but just lightly grease the inside of each container. Then take your dough and carefully form it into a ball. I just tuck the dough underneath of itself, kind of like this. It does a pretty good job, and I'm just sort of tightening the dough ball up. Doesn't have to be perfect, like that, see? And then just put it in the container, just like that. Then pop a lid on it. All right, I have four containers here. I'm gonna pop them in the fridge, let this dough cold ferment for 24 hours. That's gonna give us some additional gluten development in the dough. It's also gonna provide some really nice flavor. And about two hours before I'm ready to bake, I'll pull the dough and let it acclimate to room temp. That'll make it a little easier to work with and uh, we'll start making our pies. All right, it's been 24 hours plus about an hour and a half out on the counter here. The dough is looking great. It's definitely doubled in size and it's got some gas in there. Let's let these hang out for another 20 minutes or so and we can talk cheese. I am using a blend of sharp cheddar, sharp white cheddar and a low moisture whole milk mozzarella. This mozzarella right here, this guy, it's just a, a chunk cut from a larger piece at the deli counter. So uh, go there if you can't find it in the cheese section of your store. And this cheddar, well, it's a basic white sharp cheddar that you can find pretty much anywhere. 
And please, buy block cheese if you can and grate it at home. It's not only more economical, but it's a better product. That pre-shredded cheese that you can find at the store, well, it's covered in anti-caking agents and starches and it browns funny, it melts kind of weird. It's just a far less superior product. You'll get much better results with block cheese. Some sort of cheddar Mott's blend is uh, pretty traditional with bar style pizza. But uh, you know, if you just use what you have on hand. If you don't have cheddar and Mott's, use Fontina or something. So for every pound of cheese blend, use about 10 ounces of this cheddar and about six ounces of the whole milk mozzarella. All right, and that'll do it for the mozzarella. There. Let's give this cheese a, a quick toss. I think we're ready to make pizza. So get yourself a 10 or 12 inch baking pan. 10 is more traditional with bar pizza. Add about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. You could use grapeseed or some other type of oil too but I'm using olive oil. And then smear it around the pan. You could even go a little bit more. You could add two tablespoons if you wanted to get real greasy. Then just drop one of these doughs in, just like that. Make sure you have some oil in your hands and then just start pressing the dough out from the center to the edges. Oh, and make sure that you've oiled the edge of the pan too. This is nonstick, but that's nice to have just in case you get a little bit of sticking going on. Be gentle here. You don't want to tear the dough and just keep pushing, working your way out from the center to the perimeter. If you feel like you're fighting the dough in any way, it just, it's not stretching for you, walk away for a few minutes, let that gluten relax and then come back to it. But the extra oil in the dough should make it pretty pliable. So I don't think you'll have any issues whatsoever. A really important step with bar pizza is to press the dough along the edges of the pan like this. That's gonna give you that really thin, almost non-existent crust. Now go ahead and sauce the pie. You're gonna give yourself an even coating all the way up to the edge of the pan, just like this. This is indicative of bar pizza and it's gonna help give you that nice kind of burnt laced edge. And finally, add your cheese. I'm using about a half pound of the blend here, but I think that's really a personal preference in how much you use. Just make sure you go all the way to the edge like you did with the sauce and give yourself a nice even coating. There, I think we're good. That looks great. Perfect. All right, we're ready to bake, but before I throw this pie in the oven, let me show you my setup. This might look a bit unusual, but I'm taking a tip from Kenji over at Serious Eats and I'm placing my baking stone toward the top of the oven. That way I have uh, heat coming from the bottom to brown my pizza as it cooks in the pan below and I have heat coming from the top down to brown the cheese. Then I'm gonna transfer the pizza to the stone during the last few minutes of cooking just to crisp up the crust even more. Let's cook this cheese pizza off first and then we'll make one with a few toppings. So, got my oven preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna bake the pizza in the pan for about eight minutes. Then I'm gonna transfer it to the stone and cook it for an additional two to three minutes just to crisp up the crust a little bit. All right. Now I need to transfer this onto a pizza peel. So run a knife around the pan. Make sure that it's not sticking anywhere. I'm good here. If you're trying to use a nonstick pan in this step of the process, it's gonna be a pain in the ass for you. So spatula goes under. I'm just gonna slide it out of the pan and onto this, uh, onto the peel. Back in the oven she goes on the stone for about two to three minutes, like I'd said earlier. All right, what do you think about that one? Looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty good. Bottom shot of the crust. Oh my God. Mm. It's so good. So good. All right, I could crush this entire pizza. I really could, but let's make one with a few toppings. All right, I got another pie ready to go here, and let's try one with some uh, chopped bacon 
diced green pepper and some sliced red onion. How about that? Definitely keep it simple, maybe three toppings max, like I've got going on here. That's uh, pretty traditional with bar pizzas, nothing too crazy. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, that looks great. All right, let's go in the oven. Gotta break out the trophy stand for the next one. This is so unbelievably good. Definitely a recipe worth trying. Okay, check out Ethan's channel. Go watch his pizza video. He's cooking up some good stuff over there. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you next time.